So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about inside-out tracking and how well it works for VR systems, the headsets, and the controllers. Up until recently, the only really uh, headset systems that worked with inside-out tracking were the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, which is what I'm using. And many VR enthusiasts kind of um, wrote it off as not really a good system, which granted, Outside-in tracking and lighthouse tracking is much more accurate than um, inside-out tracking. That's not something that we can really debate. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of the newer headsets that are coming out now, the Oculus Rift S, the Oculus Quest, and the upcoming Vive Cosmos, have been shown using inside-out tracking. They're not using external tracking systems anymore. And that's bringing the topic up because people that had said inside-out tracking wouldn't work or wasn't very good and they would say to go to the Vive and the Rift, now their options are kind of dwindling away as far as external tracking systems because most of the systems that they swore by are switching to inside out tracking. And some people are concerned because they don't know the limitations of inside out tracking and how well it works. So I'm just gonna show, based on Windows Mixed Reality, how well inside out tracking works. Now, the Rift S, Oculus Quest, and Vive Cosmos have more cameras than the Windows Mixed Reality. The Windows Mixed Reality only has two cameras up front that point slightly angled out, and that gives this tracking field of view here. The Vive Cosmos, Oculus Quest, and the Rift S have more cameras than Mixed Reality. So anything I show here will actually have better tracking on those headsets than what I can do, but this is just a demonstration for people who are worried about the limitations of inside out tracking and how it works. Now this headset only has two cameras that point forward. The Quest has four cameras that point on angles like this. The Rift S has five cameras, two that point forward, two that point to the side and one that points up. And then the Cosmos has four cameras, two point forward and two point to the side. So those obviously will have much larger tracking range. Um, this is mainly to show what happens when your hands go outside the, uh, the tracking range. Now, with mixed reality, I only have an accurate field of view around here, right? This is where the cameras can see my hands and it works accurately. Now, a common misconception is that because these can only see forward, I can't reach behind me. Well, actually I can. What these do these controllers is they don't work only based on the position of what the uh, sensors see. They also take the data from accelerometer, gyroscopes and everything and they continue that motion and can still track it outside of the tracking range. Now the limitation of this is that if you move slowly and it doesn't have enough data it will not know where the tracking is and it will get stuck. So if you don't have enough movement in your swing, like my hand, real life, is behind me. But because it's outside of the tracking range, it's stuck in a three degrees of tracking because it didn't have enough data to uh, keep the motion going outside of the tracking range. So it just locks. When I bring it back within my tracking range, then it snaps back to place. Now, in most games, this is no issue. Um, you can play most games because everything you do is pretty much right in front of you and things where you do have to like quickly reach behind you, you can grab behind you and grab it, you can like fire behind you, you can even um, take a bow and arrow, pull it back, and then release it, right? So it does work quite well. You just don't have that constant reliability that you do from external tracking or lighthouse tracking. And in VR chat, this is actually really, really noticeable because everyone around can see you. It's not a single player game. So um, one thing is like, when you put your hands to your side, it's outside of the tracking range and they kind of get stuck, right? Out of habit, I just kind of started swinging my hands when just standing still and uh, it keeps tracking well enough. So in that way, it is, it's a drawback inside out tracking, but it still works. So once again, just to show, my cameras can only see forward, but I can still reach behind me, right? Pass right behind and it keeps tracking, um, but it needs movement. If you like see the cameras here point down so if I like pick my hands up slowly they get stuck up there right but if I have a little bit of movement to them right where it's enough for the sensors and the controllers to understand what's going on it will it'll keep working another thing about inside out tracking is that 
the headset does do full room scale. Some people are confused that the headset won't room scale because there's no sensors to tell where the headset is. The headset itself does do full room scale. It's not uh, just locked in place and then you only have your arms moving. The cameras read the room, makes like a 3D map of it, and places itself in that room. It actually does the same thing for the controllers, um, at least with mixed reality. You can't play in the dark because it's not just like reading the rings on the controllers and placing them that distance from the headset. The way that at least this system works is it reads the room, makes like a 3D map of it, places the headset in that 3D map, and then it places the controllers in that map from what the headset can see. <laughs> so if the room is dark and the headset can't see the room and doesn't know where it is in place, then the controllers, even if they're right in front of you, will fly off. So. That's just the reason why you need to play in a bright room with Mixed Reality and probably the Oculus Quest, Vive Cosmos, and Rift S. So I just want to show a bit more that like inside out tracking is not perfect. It's in some ways a downgrade from outside in and lighthouse tracking, but it is much simpler, it's cheaper to manufacture, and it's much easier to set up. And that's what they're going for. The Rift Quest, Vive Cosmos, they're going for being an easy system for people to just jump right in and start playing. That's a plug and play system. The Rift was more accurate, but it took at least three USB ports or even four if you had like a three sensor setup. And that was pretty hard on your USB bandwidth. And the Vive with the lighthouses, you uh, mount them in the walls and again, both of them are much more accurate and just reliable, right? Lighthouse tracking isn't going away though. The Vive Pro, the Pimax headsets, and the upcoming Valve Index all use lighthouse tracking, so they are going to be premium headsets with the best tracking system around. Those are pretty much designed for VR enthusiasts, but all the other ones are going more towards the easy consumer market because that is really where the money is. VR enthusiasts are a small group within an already small group of VR players. So it makes sense for them from a business standpoint to kind of try to make it available to as many people as possible. So the inside out tracking is designed for the common sort of casual VR player, but that isn't to say it's bad. You can still play almost every game without much issue with inside out tracking, especially with the new headsets that are coming out with more cameras and a larger accurate tracking range. Games like Beat Saber still work really well with inside out tracking. Um, FPS games, people are worried about um, lining up down, down the sights. It still does track pretty well. There are some issues, so obviously, you put your hands outside of your tracking for too long, it won't pick them up until you bring them back in. Bow and arrow, you can pull it back past your tracking range, but if you. Um, yeah, hold it there for too long, it'll get stuck until you bring it back in. FPS games, right? So holding it here is fine. If you bring it up so they're directly in front of each other and, you're, and you include the other controller, that can be an issue as well. Um, but you know, just slightly angling it so you can see both of them works fine. These are all things that um, coming straight from like a Vive or Rift to inside out tracking, you'll probably notice. But after a few minutes of just playing with the system, you get really used to it and you don't even think about it. Another issue is like super close in front of the cameras. Um, it doesn't know where they are. Which, <laughs> who does that? So what I think, at least in regards to the Rift S and the Quest and all those ones, is it's going to have an accurate tracking like here, accurate tracking here, right? So it's going to have this large tracking range. Um, especially with the Rift S, it also have it up there as well, so you won't have like this issue. Right? You don't have to keep it moving. The only two places where I think there's going to be sort of an issue is if you put your hands directly behind you. Um, that will get stuck if you're not in a constant movement. And if you uh, put your hands kind of below the headset here, where there's no cameras really pointing down to see. So if you're someone that plays VR chat and likes to do this, it might be a bit of an issue, but, <laughs> but I'm just saying. That's where I think the uh, inside out tracking will kind of have an issue. So I just want to say that inside out tracking is not as bad as you might think it is. It's still not perfect, and there is better solutions, which will be more expensive. But inside out tracking works 
99% of the time without any sort of issue. So you, you got full, you got your room scale, you can move around, you can reach 360 degrees around you, you can look anywhere, and it keeps tracking. And that's just all I wanted to say. Hopefully this helps uh, alleviate some concerns some people were having about the new headsets having inside-out tracking. Um, I, I think it's going to be good, and I just want to say that.